we have an awareness that humankind and our daily patterns of life have an impact on the environment. What we consume in terms of what we eat, what we drink, how we move around, how we run our homes and our livelihoods all have an impact. We understand what our financial limitations are because we can check our bank balances and we can budget. And we understand what our physical limitations are because we know how good we feel and we can count calories and we can count steps. But understanding our environmental limitations are way more difficult to measure or comprehend. And because of this, the effects of climate change can feel overwhelming. When I started researching energy performance, my first building that I designed, I designed it to be, or tried to design it to be environmentally friendly. I designed it to be low energy. I designed it to have natural ventilation. I designed it to have huge windows to let in lots of natural daylight. But the building didn't perform as expected. The building broke. It overheated in the summer. And it used four times the amount of energy as predicted. And through looking at the data, I discovered that if you want energy efficient buildings, you need to have energy efficient people in your buildings. And that scales up. If you want to have an energy efficient city, you need to have energy efficient buildings. And you also need to have energy efficient or energy friendly or environmentally friendly people going about their business and their daily lives. So how, how do we change this? I think in a lot of environmental problems come back to us. They come back to our perceptions of need and our lack of understanding of how we can do better. So how can we do better? Well, we need to change our mindsets. When my daughter was little, she used to love going to McDonald's. She would order a Happy Meal like most other children, and she would receive her little plastic toy. I forgot about the little plastic toy to my horror. <laughs> she received it when she opened the little box. And I said to my daughter, if you really, really want this, then you can have it. But if you're going to throw it away, like some of the other children have done, it's single-use plastic, and it's so, so bad for the environment. It's bad for the land, it's bad for the sea, it's bad for animals, it's bad for the fishies, you know, it's bad for us. So please, please take it back and someone else can use it. And my daughter would say, okay, mummy. And she would skip up to the counter and she would hand back the plastic toy. And the person behind the counter would say, would you like another one? And my daughter would say, no, thank you. Um, it's plastic, so bad for the environment. And I would be so proud of her and her, you know, my little eco-warrior that she had made this decision. Now she's a little bit older and she's into vegetarian sushi and the plastic toys kind of wrapped around the food and it's way, way more difficult to navigate. This last year, my daughter was helping me recycle. And she said, mommy, are you recycling or are you wish recycling? I said, Eva, what is wish recycling? She said, mommy, are you just wishing that someone magics the plastic away? And that got me thinking, are we? Are we just wishing that someone else is dealing with our environmental problems? My daughter inspired me. She massively inspired me to reduce our plastic consumption over the last year. Children are so inspiring. In fact, recently, children in Australia have taken a company to court. They wanted to extend their open cast coal mine and the children argued that doing so would have an effect on the air quality and their health and well-being. They held that company to account, and they won. This is a world first, and it sets a precedent for children demanding a better future. So how do we harness some of that energy? How do we harness some of that youth environmental stewardship? Well, in Glasgow, we've been working with the children from our city to create the Glasgow Children's Climate Charter. From preschool to old school, it's an intergenerational declaration and a promise that we will pass on a city that is equitable and just. It sets out the kids' climate missions and it sets out the city's climate missions so that we can tackle the climate emergency together. It puts a duty of care on the city and the city's stakeholders so that we can hand on an environmentally friendly city. 
and it has the UN rights of a child at its heart. So how do we create an environmentally friendly city? How do we create a city that is operating within balance? How do we create a city of the future that you know, operates within environmental limits? Well, first of all, we can't balance what we can't measure. So we need to gather lots of environmental performance data on how we live, how we work, how we move around, how we play. We also need to educate because we need to deliver environmental performance on the ground. And we need to change our perceptions of need. And we need to stop wishing away our environmental problems. We need to hold ourselves to account. So a sustainable city of the future. One, we need to change our mindsets. Two, we need to measure. Three, we need to balance. Four, we need to educate. And five, we need to stop wishing away our environmental problems. I believe that the next huge rapid human development will not be technologically driven because I believe that the technology is largely there to tackle the climate crisis. I believe that it will be common ground, because we all share the same ball of dirt, and unity and purpose, common unity, our global community sharing resources and working together to drive change. We need to think about the legacy of the city and the kind of places that we want to pass on to our children. And we need to create a city that is restorative by intention and regenerative by design. My question to you is, what climate actions can you take right now, at home, at work, at play, at school, to reduce your environmental impact? Or are you wishing that someone somewhere else is dealing with the problem? What will your legacy be?